Welcome to Interview Pro. In the previous videos, we have seen how to programmatically navigate from one component to another using history object and use history hook. We saw the difference between push and replace methods provided by the history object. It's not just push and replace. History object provides us a lot more useful methods. We are going to discuss the same in this video. But before jumping on to the implementation, please subscribe to my channel to receive detailed explanation of the concepts that will help you in your interview preparation. In this example, I'm taking the same code which we have used in our previous videos. We have all the routes defined in app.js file, which is now a functional component because we are not going to use the history object of props, but we are going to use the use history hook. So without any delay, let me just create a constant to store the object returned by use history hook. And don't forget to import this from react router dot. And let's console log this to see what this object has. Let's save this and uh, use npm start to launch the browser. My application is already running, so I'll just go to the browser. So this is our component. And let me open the inspect and go to console to see what is the object written by use history. So uh, these are the properties and methods that the use history hook uh, returns us. And we have already seen what is push, what is replace, and what is the difference between these two. And length, of course, we already know it. Uh, there is uh, something called action, whether the uh, route is popped from the history stack or pushed into the history stack that is represented by the action. And we have other methods like go, go back, and go forward. So let's take a look at these three method, methods. So I'll create uh, two state objects, one to store the length and the other to store the action. So cons, and for the length, I'll define a variable called length and set length to update the length and use state the initial value of length would be h dot length whatever history object returns us and let me create another object to store the action and the method called set action and this would be h dot action and let's just print these two values here let me print the length and let me print action. I'll also define two methods here. One to push the path. Uh, let me push the route home for now. So I'll call it push home. So here I'll be doing h dot push slash home. And once I push, obviously the history stack length will be updated. So let us update our variables as well. So I'll be using set length method. And this would now have the value of h dot length. Similarly, our action will also update to h dot action. Let me add one more function, which is replace about. Here, I'm going to replace the about uh, uh, route in the history. So, I mean, uh, I'm going to replace the top of the stack with this about route. And as usual, I'm updating the length and also the action. So, we have these methods. Let's make use of them. So, I'll create two buttons. This button is to push home route. And on click of this button, I have to call push home method. Similarly, I'll create another button and this is to replace about. So here I'll call the function replace about. Let's go back to the browser. So here uh, I have two buttons push home and replace about. When I click on push home, 
uh, you see that this is navigated to home and also the length of the uh, history stack is updated to 3 and since I performed a push uh, operation the action is updated to push. Now let me click on replace and uh, the length is still 3 because we already learned that replace is just going to replace the top of the stack with the route which we specify. So the length will still be the same whereas the action is updated to replace. Now let's look at the go back function provided by the history object. So I'll create another button here uh, which says go back. On click of this we are calling the go back method of the history object. Now if I go to the browser so we are currently in about. If I go to contact us and click on go back it went back to about. So go back function is used to go one path back in the history stack. Now there is another function called go. So this one is uh, we have to call this function with a parameter which is a number. If you want to go backwards in the history stack then you have to give a negative number and if you have to go forward in the history stack then you have to give a positive number. So uh, since we are looking at the backward uh, I'll give it as minus 2 because minus 1 will be similar to go back function again. So let me update this button name go back two times and if I go to the browser now we are in about I'll go to contact us and then to users and if I go back two times we are back to about so from users to contact us one time and contact us to about two times so we went two times back in the history stack so this is how go function will work with a negative number there is another method provided by history to go forward in the history stack which is go forward and let me update the text to go forward. Now, if we go to the browser, uh, we are in about. I'll click on contact us, users, products, home and users. Now I'll click on go back two times. Uh, we came back to products. If I click on go forward, we came back, we came to home because uh, after products, we have home because if you uh, remember I clicked on about and then users and then products and then home. Now when I clicked on uh, go uh, and then users so when I clicked on go back two times it came to products that means after products what was the uh, path which we sent into the history stack previously that is home. So when I clicked on go forward it came to home. Now if I click on go forward after home I clicked on users. So it came back to users. So this is the last one which I clicked before clicking on uh, go back two times. Uh, let's try this again. So let me click on home, products, users, about. So if I go back two times it has to go to products. Now we are in products and if I go forward it came to users because uh, after home I clicked on products and after products I clicked on users initially. So after products the path which is registered in the stack is users. So when I clicked on go forward it went back to it went forward to the users. Now if I click it should go to about so it went to about. Uh, when we click on go back and go forward, we are not popping or pushing out of the stack. We are just navigating through the existing routes and that's why uh, we see the exact uh, uh, series of routes which are stored in the history stack. Now, uh, let's see go forward with the go button. So. Previously, I mentioned that if you give positive number, it would go forward in the stack. So let me just update this as go forward two times. Now we have another, okay, let me save it. Now we have another button here. So let's try it. 
first we have home and then products and then users above now if i click on go back two times i would go to products now if i click on go forward two times again it has to come back to above so i hope the difference between go go forward and uh, uh, go back is clear so these are the uh, some of the useful uh, methods provided by the history object and these are two useful properties which we can use in the uh, while uh, programmatically navigating in the react application i hope this concept is clear and please subscribe to interview pro thank you